there's a couple of things that can really screw up your slow motion footage and I've made all of these mistakes at some point, resulting in me having to either scrap or reshoot footage. So let's learn how to avoid these mistakes by taking a look at the five most common mistakes people make when shooting and editing slow motion footage. It all starts in camera. Shooting with the correct frame rate for your current location is the first step. Now I know I've shown this map before, but pause and see if you can locate your country or region. Green areas are 24 FPS and the orange and purple are 25 FPS. And I'll tell you why this is important in number four, the 180 degree shutter angle rule. Thou shall always follow the 180 degree shutter angle rule, unless you really know what you're doing. But if you're shooting with the wrong shutter speed, your footage will look really choppy and weird when you start slowing it down. And when you're shooting with the wrong shutter speed and frame rate, your camera will be out of sync with a power grid frequency. And this will result in flicker. Number three. In your editing software, make sure your timeline or sequence is set up with the right frame rate for the footage that you're about to edit. If you've got a bunch of 60 frames per second footage that you want to slow down, you need to be working on either a 30 or a 23.976 timeline. You can, but you should never put a 50 frame per second clip onto a 23.976 timeline and try to slow that down because that will look like gone. Number two, when you're slowing down your footage in post, Think of your timeline FPS as your base or kind of target value. So a 50 frame per second clip on a 25 frame per second timeline should be slowed down by 50% to match up with your 25 frame per second sequence. Do not slow it down by 61 or 43%. It needs to be 50%, okay? And if you're shooting NTSC and you got a 60 frame per second clip, you can slow that down to 40%. 30 frames per second can be slowed down to 80% in order to match up with a 23.976 frames per second on your timeline. Number one, the last thing that could screw up your tasty cinematic B-roll footage on the finish line. When you're done with your edit, make sure to export your video in the same frame rate as your timeline to keep everything in sync from the beginning to the end. So there you have it, the five most common mistakes people make when shooting and editing slow motion footage. Now, there is a couple of dirty methods and techniques you can use to save footage if you've accidentally screwed up, but I think that's a topic for another video. Now, as a side note, if you're shooting video on a smartphone, you may need a third-party app such as Filmic Pro to be able to shoot PAL, as most smartphones will only allow you to shoot in NTSC with the stock camera app. Now, let me know if you know more stuff that people should know and pay attention to when shooting and editing slow motion footage. And I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.